There's a lot more to Mandy than simply being body art applied with henna. It's actually considered to be one of the 16 traditional adornments of the bride, and it takes place just before the actual wedding ceremony. I consulted bridal specialist Marklin Gavinder and Clint Singh for some expert advice on Mandy and other bridal makeup and accessories, and I'm sure you'll find it very fascinating. Nobody is quite sure when the henna plant was first brought from Egypt to India, but it's a matter of record that its dye has been used for ritual adornment for 2,000 years. Mark and Clint, welcome to Mela. Hi, Kaja. Thank you for having us in Mela. Mark, what are the trends when it comes to henna patterns? The exciting thing about patterns is a lot of them have traditional beliefs and ritualistic aesthetics to it with regard to peacock designs derived from Krishna and Radha. But a lot of the time it's becoming more designer in the sense that we're actually selecting details like flower designs that we're taking inspiration from the clothing and the original designs from the garments itself and sort of applicating it to the hands as well. You style brides for all their functions. What look do you go for for the Mendy ceremony? I think every bride wants to feel not yet like a bride. So it's Eastern but slightly stylish, younger, fresher with the makeup, glowier skins, hair more relaxed. Uh, we've actually went for a chunkier design on the jewelry since the colors were a bit laid down on the level of red on the garment itself. The use of turmeric paste as a ritual skin coloring agent is known as Halvi, and separate ceremonies are held at the homes of the bride and the groom on the day before the wedding. And what is the purpose of applying Harati? Most people believe that it was for beautifying the skin, but at the same time it's also a cleansing ritual. It's the final cleansing ritual that the bride goes through just before she enters as a bride now officially, you know, into the new family. And what about the wedding day? Of course you have to cater to all needs and all cultural groups. We knew you'd actually ask that question, so we actually pre-prepped two brides for you to have a look at today. One of the most distinctive elements of South Indian bridal jewellery is the adornment of the head and hair. Kajal, this is our South Indian bride. What I've managed to do is keeping intact the international South Indian trends, bearing in mind that we're trying to fuse effects with South Africa and India to create a traditional bride. Uh, we've managed to keep uh, the entire aesthetics representing the goddess Lakshmi and the celestial union of Lakshmi and Vishnu. Uh, hence the gold on the sari, the jari work and pure silks, the gold detailed jewellery, armbands on the bride and of course the belts. If you hold on to this for me, I'll show you some of them. I'll just show you the bride's hair and the details of how we put this look together. With regard to this bride, what I've done is I've managed to use imitation and mixed fresh flowers and taking the ideas of South India with regard to the variation of colors of the international flowers, example, the orange petals and the yellow, variegated with red roses, which are local. And these are some of the jewelry pieces that will fit into the hair. What's the significance of flowers in the hair? The significance of covering the head with flowers is firstly respect. All brides and grooms should have an element which pays respect and tribute to the gods and the, the conjoining families. Uh, so it's traditional to cover the head. And with the South Indian brides, instead of using the veil, the head is covered with flowers. It also is a representation of Lord Ganesha. Each item of jewellery has traditional significance, such as the headpiece that falls on the chakra of perception on the forehead, while the nose ring is said to ward off harm. The North Indian bride wears what you call a dupatta or a veil. I've got it already uh, placed over her here. That's generally done for support and to hold off the weight, which is generally much heavier. And then the second part of it is going to be draped on head, which I will do for you shortly. But part of the adornment also includes bangles, which is churias, which is very important for a bride to wear. I'm going to uh, let the young lady have a seat on there, and I'm going to show you how we place the veil over her head. The reason for all the, the opulence and the height and the puffiness on the top is to support this veil. The hair is generally done with the packing inside, so it, it manages to hold the weight of these dupattas. The kind of drape that you do on the veil with the bride has to also work for the garland that will eventually go over the varmala during the wedding nuptial ceremony. So um, right now I'm just placing it over her at a position that I think would be really nice and it's generally secured with pins into the hair. Generally to finish our face North Indian bridal we also use what you call bindis which is these bindis that are placed on the forehead of the bride and this completes the, the whole ensemble of a North Indian bride and then she's ready to move on to the actual nuptial ceremony where the actual sindoor will be placed on her forehead. 